Hello and welcome back to the channel. This sizeable knife was issued 90 years ago to German military personnel, specifically to their equivalent of what in England we would call the Royal Engineers, the people who clear fields of fire for artillery, that sort of thing. So it's a big, mean chopper of a knife and I ordered one. When it arrived I excitedly used it and <laughs> very quickly it became apparent that this is a display piece. The blade is now very wobbly in the hilt. So I made a template from it and I cut out this from a single piece of steel. Because in a way this knife is a lie. By that I simply mean that it appears to be of full tank construction but this is fake, this is all a casting just as this is cast as well. It's been deliberately styled to give the impression that it was forged. So the next thing for me to do with this is to find somewhere secure to clamp it just above waist height so I can get out the 9 inch grinder and put a bevel on it. There, that should do. I've clamped it to this motorbike trailer. As you can see I've polished away most of these lines. I've actually been trying to thin it from here onwards so that it has some distal taper. I've got a couple of refinements to make to the shape. I haven't got this quite right and I also need to add this curve. That should make it easier. There's also a little bit in the hook of the eagle's beak which I need to tidy up. This modern replica of the original German knife has a very short bevel to allow space to write this slogan. I think the original knife was actually beveled continuously from the spine to the cutting edge and that is what I've been hoping to achieve. So to that end I've screwed the knife to this kennel in such a way that I can really get to it with the grinder and as you can see I've got the big one back out and then a little one to polish it up. I'm trying to get a continuous bevel from spine to edge. The big grinder made light work of what seemed the impossible task of getting rid of that annoying step that I had going here and now it's pretty much a single smooth continuum up to about here and then this is flat. This guard slides on from this end which means that I have to fit the guard before I can fit the bolsters. So, before I make these bits and these bits, it's time to make this. And how am I going to do that? Well, my plan involves making three cardboard templates of varying lengths, the longest being the one which will be rolled around and embedded in the other two, or in a gap, ground away by me in the other two. It turns out that the thickness I need is three millimeters. Well in my scrap pile I've got this which should give me the two shorter pieces and this which will give me the longer one. So once again my scrap pile had exactly what I needed. One of the pieces of steel is galvanized and as I don't particularly want to breathe the horrible fumes that zinc gives off when heated 
I'm going to pop it in some lemon juice for 24 hours. I won't be idle, however, while I'm waiting. I should think it'll take me until the galve has gone from the other piece to get these two done. Well, I certainly wouldn't say that these are done, but I've made a start. Let's go and see how the galvanising's getting on in the lemon juice. Well, the surface is all fizzy, which is a good sign. There you go. It really is true, guys. Lemon juice will strip the zinc right off mild steel in 24 hours. You can just smear it away with your thumb. As you can see, I've started on the slot in the last component of the guard. I have to square off the corners and to do that I use a file. Unfortunately I couldn't find or buy one thin enough to go through so I'm afraid in the interest of creativity I butchered a brand new file. I made it a lot thinner but I kept the temperature very very low while I did it and it still cuts through metal effortlessly so it's not completely terrible. Let's get the last one cut out and then I'll tack the three together with them still on the knife to keep them aligned. I've welded the smooth shank of an 8mm bolt to the end of our piece of steel. The next stage I think is for me to heat this up and curl it round till it's nestled in here. Making progress with the cross guard. Here it is in place on the knife it rests quite naturally up against these two shoulders. Before welding the guard in place, I've just drilled two 5mm holes in the tang to accept the pins which will hold on the side scales. Having tacked the guard in place, I've been able to go ahead and weld on the two halves of the bolster and the two halves of the eagle's beak. Here it is after a bit of polishing. There's definitely more cleaning and polishing to be done but I am reaching a point where I'm starting to think about what sort of material I might use for the side scales. The original German knife had antler. My cheap replica has plastic antler. I was thinking of wood. I have done another German military knife. As the original had come with black plastic side scales, I decided to use a nice piece of English oak. Perhaps I'll do the same with this. When I was making this I did come up against something of a problem. I couldn't copy it exactly as steel is far far heavier than the cheap alloy that was used in the original knife which means that the pommel had to be rather thinner and that lends a rather odd shape to the handle because at this end it has to be as wide as the guard. I'm going to have a similar problem with this. This bolster is only 12 millimeters thick and if I made the handle that thin it would be extremely uncomfortable and unpleasant to hold so I'm going to have to swell out from there and then somehow come back to the eagle's beak which is only 12 millimeters thick. Try as I might I cannot find my bit of oak. Still I've found these beautiful pieces of bamboo and they are exactly the right thickness so it's going to have a bamboo handle. I've cut them out and I've begun shaping them I've got the side scales temporarily bolted to the tang so that I can shape around the eagle's beak. It's now time to epoxy the side scales in place. As ever, I've roughened the surface of the wood and of the tang to give the epoxy a decent key. Now, I only had 10 minutes epoxy, so I had to move quite swiftly, but I've got a couple of 5mm bolts pushed through the holes to keep everything lined up. Okay. That doesn't want to come out. I'll get these out off camera. It turns out they weren't stuck. I just have weak fingers. OK, I'm happy with the shape. I'm going to put the pins in. The pins are in. For some reason, I'm not completely brilliant at pins. I mean, they're all right. But other YouTubers seem to do them better. I'm just going to give it a coat of stain. Good, I'm content with the hilt. That's two coats of dark walnut. It's nearly dry. So the last thing for me to do 
is to actually sharpen the blade. Obviously this is uh, not something you want done before you finish the knife. So let's get a cutting edge on it. Now that is a knife you can use and abuse. I originally ordered my replica one of these because I love the design so much. I was disappointed when I saw how weakly made it was and I'm delighted that I've made one I can really use. I hope you like it too. Thanks for watching.